Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome to a prototype for our build today. In today's video, we are going to be building a regular ship, a non-hovercraft, non-submarine, non-thruster craft. It's going to be a regular ship, maybe using the PID system just to make it stable, and this is the prototype, and mostly it's a prototype for this cannon. This cannon can fire at 1,000 rounds per minute and is actually quite small. The missiles at the back, which might not end up in the finished product, so don't worry too much, are really, really nasty. As you can see, they're pretty darn big and can cut through even heavy armor very, very easily. The one problem with this craft, well, one of many problems, is I've made it far too deep, forgetting about the volume limit, so obviously I've stopped building once I realized just how far off it is, so we're going to start again from scratch. It will just be a lot easier. And of course, the symbols of corn pretty much everywhere, even before it's been fully painted. So I'm going to quickly scrap this, although I will be saving the cannon for future use, and we're going to start building our new ship. No idea what I'm going to call it, and no idea what it's going to look like at the end, but if this is anything to go by, it's going to look quite small. So, as you can see, the original ship was far, far too deep. So what we're going to do is remove this turret cap and simply replace it lower down. I'm also going to actually finish the turret, because right now it's only about half done, so that it can fire for a lot longer. I'm also probably going to limit the firepower to around about 800 rounds per minute, rather than 1000, so that the belt-fed loaders don't burn out too quickly. Since, of course, this is likely going to be the main gun of the ship. I'm actually tempted to have two cannons rather than one, especially since we're going to make it so much smaller. In terms of depth, we could probably fit them on quite easily and have one higher than the other. With the previous design, that was just not possible. Here we are, the remodeled turret, which is much smaller but much wider, and of course the new hull shape, which also is slightly wider to accompany the new turret types. Now I'm really not certain if I'm going to be able to fit a second turret onto this craft, but if I can, I will. If I can't, we are probably going to go with torpedoes and slash or missiles, because let's face it, missiles are glorious, even if you hate them. You you know deep down in your heart they are truly glorious. So I think I'm happy with the shape, I think I will have enough volume to at least get it to this far out and have at least a decent level of armour in the centre, and I think we will likely make quite a cheap, quite an effective ship. That's one of the goals still, we still need cheaper vehicles. The sub is almost 20,000, both of the structures are just over 20,000, I would like one which is around about 15 instead. And at the moment we are only just about scraping 7, which does sound like we are getting a little bit expensive, but that's just because the turret itself is incredibly expensive. The armour is actually very, very cheap, as you can see. 20 for a whole 4 segment like this really isn't too bad. But even if we do make it too expensive, I will still be happy with it. I think if I do go down the very cheap route, it will likely be a very small thruster craft, which uses more traditional methods of movement rather than the PID or control block systems, so a hybrid between thruster craft and regular plane, which would technically make it just a regular plane with more thrusters. The second gun has just been added, a clone of the first, although we could make it more powerful, since a good portion of it will be above the regular deck anyway. And I think I will do that. For now, I've just got some very simple repeating patterns on both sides to add a bit of extra armour and to make it look at least a little bit interesting. Although we do actually have way more volume than I originally thought we would have at this point, which means we could actually do something quite nice with this. It doesn't necessarily have to end up as this block. It could be a block with style. It could be a stylistic block which, let's face it, is probably the best you're going to get out of me. We've got the ammo, we've got the very basic AI which needs to be tweaked, and we have layers upon layers of armour. The only thing I'm missing is things which look nice. But let's face it, who doesn't love sheer functionality overlooks? So, 
Will these work? I just saw a very large- Yep, there it goes, already killing the enemy. I love those shells so much. But, I do actually want to go away from using fragment shells for everything, as much as they are my favourite shell by a long shot. I think they're just too good as a jack-of-all-trade shell. They counter shields, they counter heavy armour and layered armour, they even counter spaced armour, they're just that good. Of course, the downside is they technically do a little bit less damage than some of the other variants, but for so much versatility and to be able to counter shields almost entirely, with the fragments going through the shells but the regular shells being deflected, it's a little bit overpowered, and that's coming from someone who adores missiles in this game. So, let's have a quick look-see if we can change the shell type. Either way though, I do want to quickly point out that right now this ship is about twice the power of the Doom Box. Also, I've just realised, it's form over functionality, but I was meant to say functionality over form, but instead I said looks. I'm not completely with it right now, as you can probably tell. Just about able to record after a migraine, my mind's a little bit fuzzy, so I thought it was perfect to try and do a bit of recording. So right now, the shells are 100mm, I don't want to go over that, because I do love the belt-fed just sheer quantity of shells that these type of turrets can um, put forth, and anything over 100 is really pushing that. But what I would like to see is, is it worth it at all to have a shaped head? And then change these for high explosive, so there we are, we now have heat shells. Very, very small heat shells, I've never really thought about using these. So, on the downside, the damage is very low. On the upside, these things are going to shred the inside of, a, of an opponent if they actually do hit the target. Let's see, so... That's a little weird thing there. As you can see, we have three um, particulates, and then we have a penetration metric of nine. If we push this up, we don't actually lose the number of particles, because we're dealing with so few. So maybe that would be the best. And then, I would say push more into the shaped head, because the explosive damage itself is almost worthless as it is, so I would almost say push all of it except for that little bit. Yeah, I don't think this is actually going to work out too well. Very low damage, not many particles being created, but we are shooting 800 shells a minute, so... I don't know, let's just find out how this works. I doubt it will work, if it doesn't, we can try something else. Now, it's not exactly fair, but we're going to be testing out against something a little bit more heavily armoured. The Brawler, you see, does have a lot of wood rather than metal, whereas this thing is just a giant lump of metal with a big cannon attached to it, so this should hopefully be a better target, because the frag shells have already proved themselves over and over, we don't really need to test them. This is a new shell type for me, at least with this gauge. Let's see how it works. Seriously? Okay, yeah, the shells did go through straight away. Oh, AI dead! Yep, it actually killed the AI without causing too many major explosions. It just hit exactly where it needed to. As you can see, as you can see rather, the tiny bits of copper spraying everywhere when it hits the target. Okay, that was actually really good. A very, very clean kill. Very clinical. I do like that. Maybe we could... We could do something I don't normally do. We could mix the shells. Have half of them being frag, half of them being heat. That might work. Another reason to mix shell types is because, if I can find the actual item I'm looking for, there is a shell type, at least one of these parts for the shell, which allows the shell to go underwater without really having any issues. It's something I don't use too much, but in this type of campaign with a lot of subs against us, it seems worth it this one here. So it removes 90% of the slowdown incurred by water, it also removes entirely the chance of the projectile skimming off the water, although it does massively reduce explosive damage and such, and that does include frag. 
But either way, it means I can shoot underwater without there being too many issues, and considering the two structures can't currently deal with submarines, that would make this ship really useful. At least if, if at least one third of the shells have this attached, so we can shoot them properly and such. So what else could we mess around with then? Okay, so last try before we move on to just the regular armor-piercing stuff, this is the squash head, which allows all explosives placed directly behind it to create a shockwave. The problem is, this really relies on a larger shell type. But I want to try it out anyway. And begin the test! Yeah, it's doing the job, but not as good as the other two types of shell. Wait, how are these deflecting? They have inertial fuses. I definitely attached the inertial fuses, didn't I? Yes, I did. Then... I have no idea why that wasn't working. Very, very odd. Final test, because I do like doing these sort of things, and I do apologise if it's not your cup of tea, but it is mine. Let's go with this. This is a type of shell I used for the longest time, Lots of kinetic damage, lots of armor piercing, very fast shots, gets countered heavily by shields, but anything without shields, it just melts through. And this is why the fragment and the heat type of shells tend to do better, because they can counter shields. As soon as you make shields unviable, you win almost every single fight. And it's almost a massive difference. The difference is so huge, there's almost no point in using these type of shells if the enemy is even using a single shield. And that's why a lot of people like to mix shell types, even though I think it looks a little bit silly when the gun is actually shooting. Oh, whoops a daisy, I've just allowed it to shoot me. Oh. Well, if nothing else, that really did just show that we have very, very heavy armor. A missile volley and a very large cannon shot to the side did very, very little. A little bit of a change of plan. The shells we're using now have the element so that they don't lose speed when they go underwater, since at the moment we seem to be targeting this fellow underwater every single time, at least from the current sort of floaty angle we are currently at. Maybe this will be the best shell type, who knows? Especially since the enemy doesn't actually have shields. And so begins the test. Whoa, that is... melting its armor, and it's already dead! Okay, that's pretty impressive, I've got to say. I am more impressed by that than I thought I would be. It just vanished. Spawn in the brawler, turn Ready off the off. AI. Ah, but you see, as soon as there's shields involved, even weak ones like on the brawler, they are so deflected. A good 50% of that damage is being wasted. We still killed it very quickly, but it is the brawler. The brawler, by the looks of things, may be the lightest of their forces. But, we do have two guns. And what I'm thinking is one could be dedicated those shells, the armor penetrating shells, and the other could be a mix between the fragments and the Hesh shells, the heat shells. It's heat, isn't it? I don't know. I'm not good with this type of stuff. It is definitely the heat shells. Okay, good. So I was getting it correct. Go me. But yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. The front cannon, since that one is much more suited for actually shooting underwater, will have those armor penetrating rounds with the ability to shoot underwater effectively. The back shells, on the other hand, will be the more anti-armor shells, which will have the Hesh shells and the fragment shells, which will also heavily counter shields. 
I think with both of those attached to the ship, it's going to be a good counter all and will be a good staple unit in our forces. So now all I've got to do is finish off the armoring process and add some movement capability. And we're pretty much done. I think I will use the PID system to have some hydrofoils on the inside to make sure this thing can stay very, very stable in the water, even when the armor is somewhat destroyed. It's never a good idea to completely rely on the air pumps because those are so easily wrecked. Well, if nothing else, it looks incredibly evil, which I'm very, very happy with. So we're almost done now. All we need to do is add the hydrofoils on the inside and add the movement capabilities, and we are pretty much good to go. Especially since the center of mass is already under halfway, which is very, very good, considering the keel is so, so small. So I'll just finish off armoring up the, the bottom section and adding the movement capabilities, and then we'll be right back for a proper test of the finished product. Once again, no shields, just because I can't afford to run shields right now. Very soon though, shields everywhere. As soon as I'm able to use shields, they are going to be absolutely everywhere. Okay. Didn't mean it to turn quite that much, but it is stabilizing itself, so that's good. I wanted to keep it very, very low in the water, so that's doing itself perfectly. Although it is really glitching up my camera right now. There we go, that's better. Okay, basic movement is okay. Let's just make sure it can fire without capsiding. Uh-oh. Don't want those missiles, please. There we go. Well, you're dead. Don't kill me as well. Two, three, four, five hits. And yeah, we need way more recoil reduction on those cannons. Okay, I will fix that. After I watch it hilariously tip. It's not going to sink. Or capsize. But it's going to kind of do this for a while. Oh, maybe it will sink. Excellent. Engineering, everyone. There it goes! Rising back up from the depths. <laughs> okay, the AI is set up significantly better now, and I've disabled reverse, and I've added more recoil absorption to the turrets. So, try again. No, off. Off. Why must you still tip? That's only 1,000 recoil, but I guess because of the fire rate... Ow. Because of the fire rate, it's such a huge amount of recoil so quickly. And of course, because the turrets are so much on the top. On the upside now, as you can see, it's not actually tipping over. Why must you just do everything I say you're not going to do? <laughs> you see, this is the stuff I normally cut out when I'm building. <laughs> All the lovely trial and error. After halving the recoil yet again... So much better. Okay, there we go. And there goes the enemy as well. That's better. This is the type of ship we can keep on using and will just be reliable in most circumstances. So to end the episode, let's have a quick fight. The glorious Blargle against our new ship. What I'm predicting to happen is that the Blargle will win. The Blargle is 6,000 more resource in cost after rechecking and it has weapons which are just counter to this type of ship. It really should be the victor. However, what I'm looking for is that our new ship doing some catastrophic damage before succumbing to the missiles and the torpedoes, which I have to admit, the Blargle is very, very, very powerful. So, Taking control. Control. just to do something well, that's all I want. Missiles are up, although we are now shooting as well. A lot of the shells are making contact, and there we go, straight through the back section, actually causing major damage there. And I wish I had jumped off. I'm going to pause time as soon as I can. The Blargle has been killed! The Blargle has been killed by the amount of armor penetrating shots, and since it's the first one to be killed, technically speaking, the ship has won. Although, the ship did lose both of its cannons. And they're an 
and there are now torpedoes on their way. Really happy to see both my craft having so much firepower though. A little bit glass cannony, but there we are. They just annihilated each other. Although technically, this ship isn't dead yet. No, it would be dead, except for we are in the sandbox mode, so the AI death would have happened in that last explosion there. And there I go, down with the ship. You know what? For quite a cheap ship, I'm really happy to see it is a submarine killer. In addition to being good against aircraft with its very, very fast shells, and good against heavily armoured targets with its specialised shells at the back. Ultimately, although we are currently seeing it die, I'm actually very, very happy with this craft. I will do some more work off camera when I am able to actually do a little bit more recording. Look at my update video for more knowledge about what's going on with the upload schedule if you want to know about that. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you would like to see continued in the future. I am happy with this craft and will be improving it very soon. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Also, I will be trying to upload From the Depths on a more regular basis starting at the end of this week, so thank you very much for your patience. Bye bye One day I will learn how to do an intro properly.